<laughs> so I'm having a chat with Anka Lane. How are you guys? Well, very good. Very good. good. Very good. Also very good. Good. You are uh, here at Reading. How's uh, your day been so far? And looking forward to the rest of the weekend. Well, it has been really good because we opened up the Festival Republic stage and it was bouncing, wasn't it? Aye. Yeah. Yeah. That's no, great. I mean, we're not here all weekend, but it obviously leads tomorrow. Um, doing the same thing, opening Festival Republic stage. So a wee bit of deja vu tomorrow, and yeah, we'll be able to enjoy. Then catch some bands. The festival. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But it's definitely such a wonderful opportunity just because we get to do this in two different places. So it's like it's awesome here and then it's awesome in Leeds. It's just it's a wonderful thing. And it's ran really like exceptionally well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, earlier this year, you released your second record, but you've already started to release more new music. What, what's going on at the moment? We're just really busy, boys. Yep. Just really busy, but no, it was. Um, we released "Call Us a Reality" in January, and that went really well, and people really responded to it. And then, um, kind of six months down the line, we're like, "Well, we've got this other song that we recorded during that time mm-hmm. that is a good song in its own right. It just didn't fit on the album." And we thought, "Well, let's do something with that, and and uh, maybe do something special." So we teamed up with a company called Serenade, who do a uh, digital pressing. Mm-hmm. So it's something a wee bit different. It's kind of like a music NFT type idea um, and so we did that people really responded to, well to that and, and enjoyed it and um, I people like the song as well so that's <laughs> yeah. always good eh? No absolutely so even though that's part of the previous records you've obviously started to think towards record three now surely We're always thinking towards I mean, everything aren't we it's just I, always moving forward Yeah yeah you're always thinking of the next thing. Um, this was one of those that we actually haven't really started to, to write much new material yet because we've just been so busy with the current material. You can get so much mileage out of out of an album now. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so it's been festival season now. You know, we've played a lot, a bunch of shows um, with this album now, which has been fantastic. You know, we're sitting on it for so long. So yeah, the next stuff I'm sure will be in the pipeline very soon. Yeah. And then we can hopefully come back here next year and, and show people what we're made of again. Yeah. yeah. Great stuff. And uh, as you said, you have been busy on the road doing some touring. How's that been for you? It's what you do it for, isn't it? No, you, you're, no. you're doing well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's, that's why we do it. No. Keep talking, Liam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, that's why we do it. Um, you know, there's a lot of things, social media online doing very well, but still I think the, the old-fashioned way is the best way to, mm-hmm. to get fans and to show people what you're about. You can look how you look online, but no one knows until they actually see you in person and go, Aye, they, they can actually they can play music, they can make music and... There's no, there's no hiding behind it. You mm-hmm. know, you're, you're there. You're in front of folk. Um, so this is, this is why we do it. We, we just want to be on the road playing. Yeah, that's all we want to do. Certainly as a rock band, I think it's like there's still that old school going out playing in front of people. The social media thing does come into it, but I think there is still that. There's no, there's no substitute for going out in front of people and just giving them a good show. Yeah, and just giving them that like musical liberation. You can't put a filter on a on a show, can you? I mean, if you <laughs> suck, you suck, and people make you, let you know. And if you're great, yeah, and people let you know that as well. So no filter to hide behind. <laughs> yeah, no, indeed. And and more people will want to still see you playing live. What's the plan over the next few months and the rest of this year for for doing some live stuff? The plan is to get a really good support tour. So we're looking for for a good support tour. If there's any <laughs> bands watching, um, no, that's that's the next thing for us. We you know we had a really successful headline tour in February. Um, and the, the next thing for us to do is, is go out with another band and start to expand yeah. upon what we've already hit kind of thing so it's, it's hopefully getting on a on a good support tour I'm, and sure, doing that. Do. I'm sure it's doable yeah if you're speaking to anyone you know, <laughs> you know uh, anyone? well I could try yeah. I'm going to put my feelers out every interview you do by the way, I've heard Anchor Lane <laughs> are really really nice guys really good really professional and they're looking to go out on tour well considering I last interviewed Katie Baser I'm not sure oh, and you Listen, never know I'll nice. go out with anyone Pop singer with a <laughs> with the rock of you guys. As long as they don't steal our beers, we'll go out on tour with anyone. Yeah, do it. I know, fat dog. <laughs> I'm going to mention it to everyone I interview for the rest of the yeah. day. Great. It's going to work. Fantastic. <laughs> no, You'll get a call on Monday. I know. Yeah, exactly. What? But Support we, uh, with them. Get a call. Stop annoying us. <laughs> <laughs> or if anyone's watching then. this interview. Yes, that's probably more likely. I we're, we're, we're a good laugh. <laughs> we're fast at the lowdown and the loadout. You like won't that? even know we're there. What was it that we got called earlier? The nicest. Oh, the nicest band, band at Red. Yeah, not even making it up like that. Yeah. That was the go nicest go band. Ask the, the staff at the Festival Republic stage. They'll tell you. No word they'll lie. Nice, nice. Um, so when it comes to writing for you guys, how do tracks tend to start off? Is it is it a lyric? Is it a melody? Is it a riff first? What kind of kicks things off? Hey, well, at least on call this reality. 
I guess I'll hold it. At least on Call of Reality, it was usually myself that would come up with the initial part with the guitar and the, the vocal melody, and then, not always, but for the majority of them, it was sent in as a kind of first full draft, a first full structure, and then we worked on it from there. But it wasn't completely, like, it wouldn't make sense to just write it based on what I liked, it's based on what we all liked. Based yep. on our times together, we spent a lot of time together, jamming, finding, you know, showing each other songs, kind of recollecting our, our you know, our kind of most prominent uh, inspirations, because we did have quite a drastic sound change. We kind of modernized ourselves up, and so, it was great to, to write for it because it was a real challenge to be honest and uh, I think foremost with the guitar but doing you know something with, with lyrics was yeah. also kind of cool and then it was great because I have these very intelligent clever people to, to trade it off with until we, we have very much a, a fully loaded thing that we're all really happy with yeah. and then we uh, threw it at Bruce Wintel and he took it to a, a step even further. Uh, Bruce Wintel is the producer of mm -hmm. Dollars of Reality and... Yeah, and I knew. <laughs> of course okay. I knew. For you at home. For you at home. And uh, yeah, so that's that's how we got what we got, really. Yeah, and with, and with the variety of sounds that you've had over the years, is there things that you still want to try to see if work for you? Always. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think the thing that we've all been talking about is like, let's like push more into metal and more into pop and just see how like far... You can have Baby both metal. of them, both yeah. of them working together. There's a collab you didn't know you needed, Baby Metal and Anchor Lane. Say ya. No. <laughs> <laughs> Say ya no. You never know. Uh, you but you yeah, never know. Yeah, you always want to try new things, um, and you know, with this album, as as much as we went out there and did what we wanted to do, there was also a bit of us that held back a little mm -hmm. to be like, we want to show that there's still more, still more to come. And um, so I think on on the next album there'll be more kind of yeah there'll be more expansion um you know the instrumental stuff will come up a bit as well i'm sure and yeah we just want to try things we're, we're one of these bands that a lot of our favorite bands are bands that have constantly changed themselves constantly yeah, yeah. worked on new sounds and that's i don't think you even have to aim for that it just kind of comes naturally if that's what you want you know we we're not stale at all we can't we can't listen to the same stuff all the time mm. i mean you should have heard our playlist in the van on the way here it was ridiculous <laughs> absolutely ridiculous so um, if you go on spotify you'll get one of our playlists um so yeah, we just want to we just want to keep. Is there things that you've tried out? in the past that simply have not worked for you guys? Oh, yeah, man! Can I yes, take this? yes, of course. So you should hear our drafts. Oh my goodness! Uh, not to undersell ourselves because we're really happy with what we ended up with, but like, I reckon underneath uh, every you know satisfying album that you hear is a bunch of crap that that was that was left behind. You know, like you know. You know, if even if you take like you know the fantastic screenwriters of the world, if you if you you know read the stuff that didn't really make it to the the light of yeah. day, it's probably because yeah. it was poor. I'm trying not to swear, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you know everyone everyone has stuff that's less strong, and you're kind of like, God, thank God we didn't let anyone hear that. <laughs> um, Until you become legendary, then you release it as a yeah. The, then our standards can piece. drop, and we can. <laughs> And then you can have a doc. Yeah. yeah. And then you can film a documentary showing that you're actually a bit of an arsehole and yeah, some yeah. A kind of monster or something, something like that. Like that. <laughs> yeah. I can vouch for all of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what you see off the camera that counts. Yeah, yeah. Yes, guys, it's been great having a catch up with you. Likewise. So yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you.